Castanet is looking to expand St James's Park and one of the long-term issues we face as a football club is because of the fact that ever since the takeover we are now selling out every single match. Fans can't go inside the stadium. The club, in a commercial point of view, is losing out on money, which on the FFP, financial fair play, it means that Newcastle are missing out on money, which you could be using in the transfer market to potentially buy some players. And unfortunately, we've seen in this transfer window how much of a, a negative effect that can have on Newcastle United. So it is public knowledge that everyone knows Newcastle is looking to expand that stadium. And that is a problem because it's not just the fans that know we are looking to expand the stadium. It is businessmen and those who could potentially use it as an opportunity to get some money out of Newcastle United. So I wanted to talk about it all in this video because, well, Newcastle United does not own the land behind here, the East Stand, and someone has actually started a turf war at St. James's Park. I can't quite believe what I'm just witnessed behind me there. So Newcastle United actually does not own that land. So let's just take it over here now and let's show you this little piece of fence that's been put up. So this has actually been happening at the Southampton game and also the Tottenham game. So for those who actually have season tickets behind the East Stand, if you attended the Southampton game, you would have seen a massive yellow container just there. It was just standing there outside the game. Just in the way, this caused a bit of bother, caused a bit of nuisance, I think, especially for queues outside here as well. Just to, just to torment Newcastle a little bit, I guess is the best way of putting it. But it's happened again for the Tottenham game. So someone is playing a game here. And I've got to respect it because I think, in my personal opinion anyway, the idea is that I think they're probably trying to get Newcastle to buy this piece of land and they're going to almost get the club to try and do it as soon as possible. So in it. There's a bit of a turf war going on, and we know Newcastle does not own that land because it actually says on the top of the turnstiles that Newcastle does not own that property. So going into the Tottenham game, we actually have a bit of a safety concern. A lot of fans have seen this on social media. Straight away, the cause and concern, the match day, a lot of people have actually reported this to the council. And if you are sitting behind the East Stand and you have any issues with this, for example, let's say you have someone who is disabled coming to the game, may have children, massive queues outside before you get into the game, that bit of fence in the way might be a cause of concern for some people. So straight away, if that is an issue, you can directly contact the cast United about it. Uh, people actually will currently report this to the mayor. And there's hundreds, if not thousands, of Newcastle fans showing their displeasure and actually sending complaints to the council about this. And to be fair to Newcastle, I think they've got something to work with because you could argue that is a potential safety concern. Now, as we walk over, I mean, my first question is, is what is the purpose of this fence? I mean, in a technical point of view, what does this fence actually do for the owner? Uh, it looks like a bit of a, a parking zone, maybe. You maybe try and park your car amongst that, but even then, it's, it's not that big, is it? It's... um. <laughs> Um, I would love to know what the owner actually says that's for because I'd be quite intrigued to hear about it. But straight away, some obvious points to make is that I don't think this will be around for long. Uh, I'm voting to bet this time next week, I reckon this fence that I have be down. It would be a, a definite back and forth between the castle and the owner about this. Of course, this is not my property. This is not your property. This is not the castle and property. So by law, I am not allowed to touch that. And that's the same for you guys. So anyone that is caught potentially coming here, I know you might be upset. I know some of you might be angry about this. But if you are turning up and trying to vandalise and take down this fence, uh, by law, you are vandalising property. So do not do that. Again, if you have any displeasure about it, just make sure you contact your castle. My personal opinion is I don't think that this will be up for long. I'd be intrigued to see the next home game, uh, if this fence gets taken down, what action gets taken next, because it's a back and forth that's been happening since the start of this season. And it, despite Newcastle being all over the place in the transfer market, also behind the scenes, they've got to deal with quite a lot going on. And that's one of the main issues with the St. James Park expansion, because it's not as easy as you might think it is, because you have stuff like this going on, factors that Newcastle weren't expecting that's now popped up. Someone has actually went out of their way and got and paid money for someone to build a fence. Someone's actually paid money for someone just to come here, build a fence. So Newcastle, I would assume, in an attempt to get Newcastle to buy this land, at probably an inflated price, I would imagine, because again, they know that Newcastle would have to own this land in order to expand uh, the East Stand. I know there's complications for the Grade 2 list of bones, but Newcastle will somehow get around that. They still need this piece of land in order to actually expand St. James's Park on this side. And whoever owns this land clearly knows that He's smart, whoever he, she's smart, whoever it is knows what they're doing. And I've got to respect it in a horrible way, even though as a Newcastle fan, I'm, 
I'm not all for this, but that, that's the reality Newcastle's currently facing. They have a lot of people that are against them, a lot of people that are looking to seize an opportunity. And in terms of expanding St James's Park, that's an issue. That is an issue, and it's one of several issues Newcastle and I have, which is why, in my personal opinion, we are still years away from even considering expanding this stadium. And even if they got to a stage where they could potentially expand, would the public investment fund actually expand St James's Park or would they just build a brand new stadium? Because one of the big reasons why Newcastle said they were staying at St James's Park was because of Amanda and Murder. But Amanda and Murder are both not here anymore. So with Darren Eels now a bit more of a focal point with the pair, yeah, having more control over the football club, would the public investment fund put up with stuff like that? No, they absolutely would not. So um, the question now being is that, does Newcastle buy into this? Does Newcastle go, well, you know what? Whoever this is, fair enough. You played a good game. We're going to offer you this much money. We've got loads of money anyway. There you are. There's some money. Uh, please give us that land. Or when Newcastle go, you know what? We're not putting up with this. Because, again, admittedly, yes, I think you could definitely ask the police about that. You definitely cause a potential concern the match day saying we're going to have a lot of people outside the turnstile here that's going to be an issue for us I'm sure you could put a complaint in about that but the owner of this is definitely not backing down so he's just going to put someone else down there's going to be something else here on a match day and it looks like it's going to be a frequent back and forth this season so whoever this is that's doing that I would love to potentially hear from you and just to hear your side of the story and see whether there is something going on here because I feel like everyone deserves a voice. My main question is this. If you were Newcastle now, what would you do about this? Would you give in the demand and would you buy this piece of land, even if someone is potentially being awkward with you and almost is tormenting you on a match-by-match -match basis to try and force you into paying up? Would you do that or would you just go, no, it's not happening? And potentially you not be able to expand the East Stand if you were to get past the complications of the Grade 2 listed buildings. Uh, would you give in to that and actually go, well, yeah, this money's going to help us long term. Let's expand the stadium. We will pay all of this individual once. What would you do? Because I think it's quite a fascinating question. And as much as I don't want to say it, long term, I don't think this stadium's sustainable. I, I don't think the Castle have got the land that they really want because it's not just about the stadium land. I think especially we've got a Man City, for example, they have a full complex. They've got the training ground, they've got the women's stadium, they've got everything all in one place. And I think in the ideal scenario, that's what Newcastle United wants. So there's history, the heritage of this football club. The PAF, I, I'm willing to bet over the next few years, I, I reckon they could potentially build a project where they decide they're going to change their mind and actually move elsewhere and to build a brand new stadium and to do their own thing. Because even... If Newcastle was to stay here, not mention when you expand the stadium, the fans there have got to be taken out while they expand it. So Newcastle would still lose money then, not to mention how much money this would actually cost and all the complications in terms of the schematics and how you would expand only certain parts of the stadium. It's a lot of work to do. Whereas you can start from scratch with a brand new stadium, a brand new project for Newcastle where long term you get additional sponsors in, you have more opportunities to make revenue. I'm willing to bet the PAF would be willing to actually build a new stadium and to leave this one behind. And that's the sad truth because I look up in this ground, I love it being in the, the cathedral on the hill and I know Darwin Eels and a lot of the staff members in the castle are quite big on that. But people can change their opinions, people can change their minds, especially when Newcastle spend more time seeing stuff like this. I'm willing to bet long term they could flip their mind around and actually potentially go, well, we've done what we can, but I think we should build a new stadium. But that's just my thoughts anyway. I'm not here to get into all that. I'm just here to tell you there was an ongoing turf dispute between the Castanet and the owner of this piece of land. Southampton and Tottenham at home, this individual has actually went out of their way to start putting stuff on this land and to cause a bit of a disruption on the match there. So let's see what happens next. Will the council get involved? Will the Fumbia police get involved? With what will the Castanet stance be on the matter? We'll let you know uh, further updates as they come out. We appreciate you watching anyway. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think about all this going on? Still got plenty of content coming out. So make sure to stick around if you enjoy the videos. And we'll see you all in the next one.